Doody doody. You're currently watching the Need for Speed Underground 2 post view done after 13 years. This video is designed to help you decide if you want to play the game for yourself or not. It's not a review because that would mean I would make that decision for you. But in this case, I will talk about the game in detail and let you decide for yourself. Want to play a classic racing game that lets you take control of your vehicle and customize it to the ears? Stay with me and find out for yourself if this is that game or not. As always, I'm not going to talk about the game's plot and I will try to keep this spoiler free as possible. Back to the story there for a few seconds. Underground 2's story is a direct sequel to Underground 1. The plot or story is almost non-existent so there is not much to spoil for you guys. It's just a few cutscenes and the several conversations which are sadly boring and not immersive at all. Typical cliche, you keep racing the, then the bad guy threatens you, tries to take you out and then you beat the bad guy but I guess back then Back in 2004 when the game was released, this wasn't a cliché yet, this wasn't a cheesy story. So it's not a total downer considering all things, but it lacks a lot of content and leaves a lot to be desired. After beating Eddie's street gang the Eastsiders in Olympic City in the previous game, now the player arrives in Bayview and starts racing here. The game was developed by EA Blackbox and published in 2004 by EA aka Electronic Arts for the sake of the undocumented persons. But I'm pretty sure that by now you all probably heard of how EA is destroying the gaming industry nowadays, but whatever. The game is a racing game built on the EAGL2 game engine, which yes, I know it spells out like Eagle. In the main menu your current car is displayed for show. As for the menu, it's pretty decent and consistent, easy to get used to and has everything you need. The in-game menu has the context of an SMS system, which basically has four tabs and can be accessed at any time. The first tab is for tips and basic tutorials, the second for special event reminders, the third for story messages received from Rachel, our side character, and the fourth one is about messages about the parts, body parts and car mods you unlocked. This is a nice system because after you read them and forget something, you can just go back at any time and read them again. That is if you didn't delete them. You can also access a tab that shows your profile's progress, more like a stats board where a lot of statistics is displayed. Like your reputation ratio, win ratio, uh, races completed, percentage of parts unlocked and much much more. This is good to keep track of your progress. The HUD or interface is kept simple, as it should be for a racing game. Minimap on the left bottom and your rev meter and speed meter on the bottom right. Your credit is also displayed in the top right corner, which I don't really understand why was, was it so important to display during races or free roam. The GPS arrow, arrow is also displayed in the middle of your screen if activated. This GPS feature is very appreciated. Because you have no fast travel so this forces you to drive to every single place you want to get. Which is great, because this way you the player will interact more with the places and the map. And you will get to know it better. It's a driving game, so drive, don't be lazy. So the GPS feature shows you the way to your objective, which is very helpful. The graphics of the game haven't aged that well, it's all blurry and shady, not that clear pristine look, and the aspect ratio of the game is 4 to 3 and you can't change that by default settings. So I tweaked it a little bit and now the game has a 60 to 9 ratio and has some better graphics. It's almost like a new game so considering graphics like this it's pretty good and back then I would have considered these graphics in a racing game 10 out of 10. The animations are pretty fluid, has no issue there. Also the car's details are pretty sweet. So great job on the visual effects EA, 
as always. The environment is built up by the city and the city traffic. Regarding the visual details of the city traffic, it's pretty shit. They almost, they mostly look like a brick without texture on four wheels. But this is overshadowed by the by your awesome detailed car. The city itself looks so nice, and it seems so lively, even though there are no pedestrians, as in the rest of the racing game in all the history of gaming. The map is divided into five districts. Each of the five distinct neighborhoods in Need for Speed Underground 2 features a unique look, feel, including varied driving conditions, road surfaces and track types. The city center was based on Philadelphia. It's sparkly, shiny and awesome with lots of details, casinos and hotels. Beacon Hill was based on Beverly Hills with steep downhill, downhill roads and Cole Harbor was based on Camden, New Jersey, and Bayview as a whole is a microcosm of the west coast of the United States. How awesome is that? And because there is only night time in the game, these districts look so cool, and everywhere you see in the game you can go to. The night time in the game is explained as you are an illegal underground racer, so it would make sense to only come out at night. Also the story and every race intro slash tutorial cutscenes are told in an interesting comic book style, which is so awesome, I love that! And all this, all the environment and heavy vehicle customization adds up to this game's vibe, which for me it was an awesome 90s or early 2000s vibes and feel. There's also a dynamic weather effects which aren't very detailed and apparently doesn't show on your car or on the road, but it does show on the camera and it looks very lifelike and cool. It also affects the driving experience a little bit, but we are going to talk about that in a bit. Also, big sponsors for this game and great hidden advertising, EA. Hidden, you know, see what I did there? The music in the game matches the mood of the game, but it only has like 20 tracks on its track list, so it gets annoying and nerve-wracking real, really fast, especially if you don't like this genre of music. The sound effects are amazingly done. Every car has its special engine sound, and after you add a turbo or tune the engine, or mod the engine, you can clearly hear the difference in the engine sound. So great job there as well. in the game are, meh, really not that interesting. You won't even see much of them so you don't got the time to get to know them, interact with them and connect with them. So it's really not immersive, I guess is the right word. Voice acting was okay and the writing was super cheesy and cliche but as I told you before, back then, maybe it wasn't. Yeah? It's done. Everything is set up. You just make sure you hold up your end of the deal, you hear? The AI is really good here. It doesn't do weird, unexplainable stuff. And the catch-up system is right on point. For those of you who don't know what the catch-up system is in a racing game, it's a feature that allows the players to catch up with the AI if the player had crashed or just messed up a few turns. The AI won't magically stop to wait for you. It will take back from its speed, but nevertheless it's hard to catch up because those AI racers are cutting through turns like it's nothing. So buckle up. Also if you play it on harder difficulty, then it makes it takes back less from its speed while trying to catch up with them. The civil cars do more shady shit every once in a while, 
but that doesn't really affect your experience in the races. Free roaming is introduced in the game. It's the first time we see this in the Need for Speed games. Free roam lets you drive around the city, players can visit tuning shops, car lots and race events seen around the entire city. Players can find money rewards and unmarked race events in some areas of, of Bayview. Players will also compete in outrun events with AI street ra racers that randomly appear on the streets of Bayview. Outrun basically means that you engage a race with a random AI car and then you have to take the lead and put 300 meters between you and him. You get reputation and some cash for this. It's like a 1v1. Customization. Well, customization in Underground 2 was significantly expanded compared to the previous titles from the series. With more than twice the visual customization of Underground 1, there are literally billions of car combinations available to players. Visual customization has expanded with the ability to customize the car's front and rear bumpers, side skirts, spoilers, hoods, exhaust tips, doors, roof scops, wheels including the ability to put on spinners, awesome, headlights and tail lights, side mirrors, what else, uh, paint, vinyl and decals can also be added as well as uh, car stereos, speakers, amplifiers, subwoofers, hydraulics, nitros bottles and underground neons and even scissor doors. Most visual modifications to the car have no actual effect on the vehicle, vehicle's uh, performance. For example, the sound system, for example, could be put in the car's trunk but serve no purpose other than visual cues. Hydraulics can be used in combination with nitros at the start of a race, which can cause a car to do a wheelie and for some cars it gets a better launch. The performance and handling of the car is affected by cosmetics, cosmetic modifications like spoilers and hoods which affect the downforce of the car. All of these modifications are required for the game's completion. The car's performance can also be enhanced by upgrading the car's engine, ECU, transmission, suspension, adding nitrous oxide, tires, brakes, reducing the car's weight and adding turbos. The player has the ability to either upgrade the performance through upgrade packages or by purchasing individual parts of each performance category. And for each individual part, you can select a manufacturer. How awesome is that little detail in the game? Seriously? Why do we don't see stuff like this in the future Need for Speed games? Whatever. For more seasoned racing gamers, Need for Speed Underground 2 also introduces dyno tuning system which allows players to specifically tune certain aspects of, of the car such as suspension springs, shock absorbers, gear ratios, aerodynamics, brake bias, individual tire grip and uh, how much air intake has the turbo or the nitrous oxide which are so detailed and so precise. Wow, complex, very very nice touch, yay, very nice touch, I wish we see this in future games, but I know we won't, so I'm sad about that thing. The player could then test the setting via dyno test, at which point they would have been given specific information such as a 0 to 60 miles per hour time and max torque and etc. This whole tuning slash dynoing system is so complex and detailed that I only recommend using it if you really know what you are doing to your car. Otherwise, it will only ruin and make your driving experience more difficult. Alright, now time for some features. The replay feature lets you rewatch the race after it's done, which is a nice touch and some sweet, sweet camera angles. This is what you're seeing right now. The jumping feature is in there as well, but it's not something likable. The slow motion camera shots from the front just takes you out of the experience and destroys your synergy with the race. Be 
because after the jump you have to prepare for the landing but you lose control over your car once you are in the air and you also can't see what's in front of the car because the slow motion shots are always from the front so this is fucking frustrating sorry for the f-bomb so most of the time you will crash or just miss a turn and smash into the fence the crash feature is basically another slow motion shot but this one is okay and finally the reset mechanic that lets you reset your car on the road if it flips over or just won't stop rotating or you lose control and crash and whatever this helps you because after a crash you quickly press the, the reset button and can continue the race before the, your opponents catch up to you I wasn't able to find any big issues through my playthrough but I was constantly crashing I mean the whole game and I was losing progress was very very nerve wracking but I think the reason behind this is that I tweaked it a little bit so I can play it on 60 to 9 ratio and have some better textures so I guess that had to do with the frustrating crashes I don't know but otherwise I know the game, game doesn't crash so many times the star rating from Need for Speed Underground 1 is also used it rates your car's visual level 10 stars in the, is the most also you need to build a car a 10 star car to finish the game <laughs> interesting fact here there are no cops no police whatsoever which I know for many of you is a bummer but that's that I loved the fact that there were no police to chase me down I don't know why I just love the idea of not having police to chase me down but that's just my personal opinion I wasn't satisfied by the fact that there are only 31 cars in the game three of which are SUVs Jeeps in English there's just just a few brands of cars and I would really wanted to play this game in an exotic sports car but I guess we're not going to get a Ferrari, Porsche or a retro Lamborghini Underground 2 is the first game in the Need for Speed series to offer three SUVs as racing vehicles which may be modified extensively just as other cars in the garage you only have five slots for cars which is just on point considering that there aren't many cars in the game to catch your eye an interesting thing in all this car business business is that you don't actually pay for cars you exchange them or just get them for free because your sponsor deals entitles you to a car these sponsor deals you get are awesome based on your reputation you can choose from a couple huge brands that wants to finance the player and represent the player you can sign a contract with these sponsors every phase of the game there are five phases of the game and you get to choose one of them which pays the most or which has the best logo or name or which has the easiest requirements to complete these expire once you've done some races for them and shot some pictures of your car being on DVD and magazine covers these are special events the DVD and magazine covers more like a time event you have to get from point A to point B in a given time if you make it then you initiate a photo shoot and can show off your car's features and snap a photo which then makes it to the DVD or magazine covers and you get some cash for it also your car needs to have a given number of star ratings in order for these special events to be available progression is interestingly solved in this game as you accumulate credits and reputation throughout races you unlocked mods to your car but in order to use those mods you first have to find the body shop performance shop and paint shop each district includes each kind of shop for example body part body shops are marked with green lights performance part shops are marked with blue lights and uh, paint shops are marked with red lights after this after you find all the shops after this you can use the car mods you unlocked also there are some super rare mods that can only be unlocked through outrun races after winning five outrun races you get a special event after which you get a super rare mod 
and it really feels that way it really feels like it's rare and it's super awesome because after the player gets the upgrade gets a call from Rachel who tells the player that how awesome and rare that upgrade is and it's like the only one in the west coast and stuff like that also because these special upgrades can be bought in shops they are gifted by the AI racers you beat in outrun challenges this whole thing just adds to the street racing feel which is very very nice also cars are unlocked after winning the underground racing league challenges races sorry urls for short need for speed underground 2 features a variety of different event types from circuit sprint drag suv events the before mentioned special events outruns and urls urls take place in a special racing track on the airport awesome environment job there as well also you have drifting events where you accumulate points making drifts and the last my personal favorite the street x event these take places take place in parking lots or shipping yards there is no nitros allowed in these races and you have to make sharp turns and try to stay ahead of your opponents controls there is manual transmission which is how I play every racing game because it just gives you more control over your vehicle also I rarely use brakes because I use engine brakes more effective so I love that they have the option of manual transmission it also gives a deeper experience plus it's harder but if you're a good driver in game or real life then you definitely have an acceleration advantage because you can backshift more efficiently and cut through turns and press that acceleration and you when exiting the turn you already have uh, the right shift and you can you can accelerate more efficiently I guess that would be the definition whatever if you know what I'm talking about you know it's more efficient to, to play this game or any other racing game with manual transmission it's interesting that they managed to, to pull this off in 2004 but they couldn't do the same in 2005. Anyway, this whole EA controversy is a topic for another day. The control of the car and the physics is so well done in this game. Almost like in real life. If you have a powerful car, then your wheels gonna spin out. And if you have an engine brake too fast, then your car will slide from right to left or from left to right or whatever. And if you rev too much the car, it will definitely spin out the wheels. So well done. Another thing that they didn't, didn't manage to do in 2005, but whatever. It really feels in this game like you have a total control over your car. Also, rain affects your traction. Sweet, right? Alright, not going to spoil the end of the story although there is not much to spoil but the end game is okay which gives you the option of replaying any race in the game and still lets you free roam the map and challenge other racers to outruns players can found money slash credits around the map in free roam mode these are the only collectibles in the game plus the tuning shops if you consider them because they also we have to be found before using them so these are the two things that can be considered collectibles in this game it took me around 30 plus hours to complete the game in 100% which is just too much and ridiculous and this was because I had an issue of constant frustrating crashes and losing my progress but if I hadn't tweaked with the game as mentioned before and I wouldn't have crashed so many times I would have finished it in like 23 hours because that's what it takes to finish it 100% that's the basic lifespan of the game so yeah there we have it there is the quick race option from the main menu the quick race modes mode allows the player to create their own races with different options players can use vehicles they have created in my cars as well as any other vehicle from their career which is the story mode more tracks cars and parts will be unlocked in the quick race mode as the player progresses through the career mode 
Need for Speed 2 Underground had an online multiplayer cap capability on PS2 and PC and Xbox. However, by 2010, EA Games had shut them down. Sad emoji. The critics had only positive and mixed review for Underground 2. Absolutely no negative reviews, which is so awesome and is a very great achievement for a game. So I agree with them that this game is simply fantastic, phenomenal driving game with lots of variety and awesome 90s and 2000s style and it's fun game which matters the most that overcomes its faults with depth. So, I am highly recommending this game for all racing fans, all the Need for Speed fans, and even if you played it once, go ahead and give it another spin. You will love the nostalgia in this game, I guarantee it. Even if you never played this game, give it a try. I'm pretty sure you will like it because it has more pros than cons. And even those cons are very, very small and irre irrelevant. And on top of all that, this game is one of the best Need for Speed game, if not the best Need for Speed game up to day. Even up to day, it holds very good. It has a story, awesome deep customization style, awesome style, 90s, 2000s style, and the controls are just on point. If you don't like cops chasing you all the time, then this is the racing game for you. If you like cops and better story, Need for Speed Most Wanted is the real deal. So, decide for yourself which is the best Need for Speed game from these two titles and awesome games. Because I can't recommend this game enough to all the gamers out there. This is a game from EA's time back when EA was in their, it's what I would describe as a golden age. Back when they made awesome non-monetized games. So this is one of the neat games, one of those golden age awesome neat sweet game something that i forgot you can customize the car's nitros purge i mean how awesome is that and how much detail did go into this game all right that's it thanks for watching this was my post view of the need for speed underground 2 if i missed any important aspects of the game please let me know in the comments section down below that would be awesome i would love that if this video helped you make a decision whether to play the game for yourself or just watch a walkthrough of it, then share it please so it might help others as well. And if not, give it a like anyway, or I will humiliate you in front of your racing gang with my Brian O'Connor like Skyline GTR. And never subscribe to my channel. Until next time, hoodie doody!